Welcome along. This is something a little different. I'm going to do a live lesson today. We're well, not necessarily live, <laughs> it's recorded, but uh, something that we haven't done here at Precision Golf. I want to welcome along Christos, one of my rising stars. Um, so, Christos, we've been working, what, a couple of years? Yeah, that's about right, yeah. And you play at Walton Heath and at Cuttington? Yep. Um, how long have you been at Cuttington for? Uh, go three years, I think, about that. And at Walton Heath? A year and a half, about that, yeah. Big junior section at Walton Heath. Yes. Strong players. Yeah, a lot of strong players. Actually, one of the, one of the lads that I grew up playing golf with uh, was a junior member at Walton Heath. Robert Hinson, he was always much, much better than me. I dislike that immensely. But, uh, you know, it's good to have a good, strong junior section, isn't it? Because you can sort of pit yourself against the other yeah. better players in the club. And then when you reach the, the pinnacle, particularly of somewhere like Walton Heath, you know you're going to be pretty good compared to all the other clubs in the country. What is it you like about Walton Heath? It's a really tough course. So I can test my skills and get better. And how does that differ from Cuddington? What are the different challenges you face at Cuddington? There's not much, I don't know, bad rough, so it's quite easy to get a good miss. Whereas at Walton Heath, if you hit it even a little bit off the fairway, it's a really hard shot from there. For those of you who haven't played Walton Heath, it's lined with heather. Cut a lot of trees down. Yeah, quite a few. But that just makes you see the heather a little yeah. bit more, right? <laughs> so standing on those tee shots and looking at a narrow fairway in amongst heather, knowing that the kind of heather's like a penalty shot, isn't it? You know, in your mind's eye, thinking, well, I could hit it in there and I'll probably find it, but getting more than a wedge at it. You're probably not likely to do that. So, I thought we'd just start off with a little what's in the bag, because I think, I um, mean, something that has really changed since I was a wee lad, which was only sort of 10 or 12 years ago, not really 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, junior equipment has, has moved forwards. Manufacturers are a lot more uh, embracing of junior golf. Yeah. Um, you've got US Masters, you've got Ping, you've got even Lynx, a lot of companies that offer up kind of a range of equipment. You've gone with some tailor-made irons. Yeah. Let's start, let's start with the wedges first. Favourite wedge in the bag? 56. 56. Or, or, a, or a wedge. Or a wedge. Yeah. Okay, so you've got a wedge, 56. Yeah, pitching wedge. And a pitching wedge. Yeah. Um, which one do you use the most? The 56? Probably. So that ties in with it being your favourite? Yeah. Might want to use the other two yeah. so that they become favourites too. Yeah. <laughs> little tip out there for you. Don't keep practising the things that you're good at. Um, and so you use the 56 around the greens for chipping? Yeah. For bunkers? Yeah. It depends how far away from the green it is. Yep. Yeah. Mostly. And something that we've talked quite a lot about, um, those short range chip shots you like to play it through the air mm -hmm. and I'm always trying to encourage Christos to get it on the floor a little bit quicker when we don't need to take it over something. Um, what is it that you feel that's difficult about that? Because obviously, you know, I've, I've followed you around and, uh, on a few of your events and, and I never make any gesture or comment on course, but we have a talk about it afterwards. What is it in a certain situation that makes you kind of shy away from less loft, do you think? Just in case, I don't know, it rolls past the hole quite a bit and I feel like I've got more control with a, a high lofted club. Right, so you feel the spin gives you a bit more control. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? You know, I think if you were to take a, a you know, 100 tour players, I mean, a lot of them would use loft of the younger generation. Mm -hmm. I think you then go to people like a Fleetwood or Rory of that generation, mm -hmm. slightly older. I mean, I still think of Rory as, as a young player, yeah. but he's been out there a while now. They're tending to make the ball go on the ground and, and they feel mm -hmm. more control with it there. Different if you're playing in the US, a bit more flight, yeah. a bit more spin. So that's certainly something that we're looking to develop in your game. As we get deeper into the irons, you go from nine iron up to five iron. Yeah. I mean, five iron, you know, in, back in the day was, was a reasonably easy iron to hit. They're all less lofted now. They all go a little yeah. bit further, got less spin, slightly higher launch. Five iron or hybrid, which one do you tend to prefer to use? Hybrid. Hybrid. That's a good message out there for a lot yeah. of guys and girls, right? Hybrids. Uh, I've just got one in my bag. When you look down at the hybrid, it looks a little bit more friendly because, yeah. in your mind, why does it feel more friendly? Bigger face and it's a bit loft, it's a bit more lofted, it feels like. Yeah. 
Yeah. Just got a little bit more meat behind the golf club. Feels like you're going to get a little bit more ball flight out of it. I think as, as players, you're always looking to, to get flight. It's funny, as you get older, <laughs> the more a golfer wants to knock flight down because it makes them feel flight safer. But when you're younger, you want to get it more flighted. Mm -hmm. That's the trait in the chipping as well. Then you move up to your five wood. Yeah. How far do you hit this? Uh, if, I, if I strike it well, 160, 165. Carry? 140. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And you feel from, from 140, the flight that you get makes you feel in control in terms yeah. of the other end. It can pitch and stop pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty good between a pitch distance and an end point, 15 yards from 140, 150 with a yeah. hybrid, uh, with a hybrid rather. And then we move on to the driver. Yeah. So the driver, now we had a good chat about this, didn't we? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when Crystals came to get fitted, uh, of course, the fitters will always see the player, direct the player in a way that they feel is most efficient and get the most out of your game. And of course, Christos and I both love the Sim Max too. <laughs> we were desperate that this was going to work mm -hmm. out best for you, and it happened that it did work out yeah. best for you. What is it that you like about the Sim Max too? I like just the face, it looks really cool behind he, the ball. Christos colour codes his shoes to the golf club <laughs> as well. Uh, <laughs> these are fresh out the packet as well, these yeah. shoes, aren't they? Not for today, I, we saw him on Monday. But uh, so th this, do you like the um, aesthetics of it, the colours, yeah. the bit of carbon on top? Yeah. It's, it feels so nice when I, when I strike the ball cleanly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 12 degrees of loft. Yeah. Something, you know, I think when you're younger and haven't quite got the club head speed, having more loft gives you that opportunity to launch it and get it mm -hmm. carrying a bit more. Obviously, if you've got a low swing speed, launches drop down, spin rates drop down. So we need that extra loft in a, in a driver uh, to get it launching, spinning and carrying the mm -hmm. most. And there's that fine point where loft and spin uh, gets to the pinnacle of, of efficiency and we found it at 12 degrees. Brilliant. And what we've got in here, Acra, Acra yeah. FX, nicely colour coded blue as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was purely by chance because obviously we don't necessarily choose shafts that fit the colours mm. of the head. All right then. And of course the putter. Can't miss yeah. the putter out. Even roll. We've talked a little bit about keeping the clubs clean. Crystal says yet to hear that message. But uh, <laughs> have you been putting yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> it's still fair. <laughs> I'm just going to give that a wipe myself there, Christos. I haven't got a towel on the bag. That's all right. No wonder the clubs are wet then. <laughs> Junior golf, you've got to love it. I mean, you've got to love it. Anyhow, uh, even roll. What do you like about the even roll? I just really, really great for stroking, just overall, just a great putter. Yeah, and uh, of course, you've gone with the kind of a mallet design. <coughs> Excuse me, I've always been a mallet kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever gone with a sort of a bladed look? Or have you I always used stuck to when I was a bit younger, I had a Scotty Cameron. Yep. But ever since then I've just got mallet putters. Really. Mallet putters, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and is it the sort of the depth of the putter that makes you feel like you can get yeah. it started online perhaps? Yeah. And the line on the back as well, right? Yeah. Really helps out with that. Brilliant, okay, well, that's the bag, the what's in the bag. And of course you've got a laser, yeah. Bushnell. I mean, you've just got yourself a little GPS watch yeah. as well. On charge at home. Yeah. Char on charge at home, brilliant. Yeah. And I mean, obviously you carry your bag when you can, but when you don't carry your bag, mm -hmm. you've got yourself a little Stuart Golf radio yeah. control. Mm -hmm. Any sponsors out there looking to help out Christos in this uh, journey, feel free to jump on board. Um, so let's talk about golf swing. Yeah. Uh, from my perspective, uh, I think working with juniors is a really exciting opportunity. The things that you come up against as a coach is that the young lad is trying to hit it hard. And I think when you're trying to hit it hard, shape and form kind of goes out the window. You've got a golf club that is effectively, statically not too heavy, but when it starts moving and starts to build up speed and weight, it feels quite heavy. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you then start to get to the driver, that's when it really starts to get ragged. So whenever we work, I'm always trying to make the club and Christos come together with the feels that we try to generate. And that's why we've got bits of kit out here on the left-hand side, which I'd love to talk to you about, of how we've kind of directed Christos. And Christos is, very, you know, we always use TrackMan. And the data that we talk about 
is something that we're always trying to educate Christos on because that's just the way the game is now. Uh, I think we're going to see a real change in the way ranges look. We're going to see them shortening up even more data, more uh, ranges and indoor simulators than ever with Trapman on and, and flight scope and, um, and shot tracer. So the data is really important to us, isn't it? And yeah. you've got a, a, a working understanding of, of your data. Yeah. So with the 7-iron, where should your attack angle be, roughly? M minus two, maybe, probably about that. Yep, so if it was okay. to go more than that with a low swing speed, the ball would have a little bit too flat a flight. So we have slightly less attack angles for lower swing speeds. Where should your club path be, roughly? Zero, probably, maybe, I don't know. Plus one, minus one. Yep. So a frequency of inside out, outside in by one or two degrees. Of course, depending on the shape of shot where they're trying to hit. And where should the face be pointing relative to your path and target? Phone your curveball there. Uh, <laughs> so if you're going to hit a fade, yeah. where would the club face need to face? Open, open to the club path. Open to the club path, but it's all aligned to the left or right of the target. Yeah. Left, yeah, left, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to hit a draw, yeah. your club face would be closed. That's club path. Yep. And it'd be aiming right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in old days, it used to be point your path where you'd start the ball, and then point your face where it ended. Well, of course, we know that's not the, uh, the truth. Uh, we need the face pointing where we want the ball to start. Uh, and if we're going to draw it, perhaps even a little bit right of where we want it to start, um, so that we can get the ball to draw back. So the working knowledge of, of Trapman data, even at a young age, that Christos is, uh, it, it started already, just like it being at school, right? And I think you, you really like the data, don't you? You enjoy yeah. seeing it change. And I think if I gave Christos a Trapman with aid of his dad, I think they'd have a really good time yeah. and be able to help their game. So um, let's see you hit some. Okay. You've warmed up already a few, yeah. a few shots, but we'll give you uh, a few shots. Now, Christos is a ball snob. <laughs> he will always he will always collect the prettiest ball on the on the tee. Now, <laughs> now we've got lots of new shiny ones. Mm -hmm. You're going to be lost, aren't you? You yeah. won't know you won't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> so what club have you got here, Christos? Seven iron. Got seven iron. So on the left hand side, we've got the body trap mat, tells us the pressures in the feet. So it gives us an idea of what kind of forces Christos is using through his feet. We've got the leaderboard, which is a sliding skate. And we've got the BOSU ball, Swiss ball, kettlebells. We've got TheraBand hanging out as well. Um, Christos works with Kate, yeah. our TPI trainer. Uh, so we're always trying to get you a little bit stronger, a little bit more mobile, fitter, understanding mm. how we use ourselves. Hit another shot for me. So that shot we've hit there, a couple of degrees down. That's exactly what you were after. Yeah. Club path was four to the left. The face was three to the left. And so a difference of one degree, so a little bit of a fade. Yeah. I think people have also got to remember when you see these images up on Trapman, particularly in the simulator, you would see that golf ball on the golf course as dead straight. Because we're seeing a image that allows us to see the start line and the end point of a fade, of course, by the time you've looked up, the ball's reached its peak and is yeah. falling down with such a little curvature, we wouldn't really see the ball bending. Mm -hmm. Have another go. It's always important to get a few looseners under your belt, see what's happening on the day. Bit more down, bit more left, bit more open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have another go. So we'll get a couple more and then we'll just have a little talk about what we're trying to encourage Christos to do.
Nice strike there. Bit more down, bit more left, bit more open. Probably something that a lot of golfers will see. Bit of a strong angle of attack. So have a little drill that we were getting you to, to work on on Monday. So take it back, keep the force and pressure into the toe. And then we can use that left foot to move you around the golf ball. So something that when we start to move the golf club in a downswing, there's a couple of forces that we need to be very aware of. Take her up to the top, Christos. You have, every golfer has an input on the handle. If you're moving efficiently, we should feel a load on the handle. So you start to load the shoulder. So if I put the, my hand here and you push it against my hand, Christos feels that there's a pressure on the, on the handle. So that's the top of the kinetic chain. And then we've got the bottom of the kinetic chain, which are the feet. And I think understanding how we mobilize our lower half through the feet is a really important ingredient. So as you go to the top again, what we see in Christos's game is that we start to see him turn back too much and pull the club across himself. Now, understand that with junior golf, your legs, and for most golfers, your legs are stronger than your arms. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you're young and the club feels heavy, it's why we tend to see golfers, junior golfers, really turning out the way in the club being left behind because you're trying to turn your body so quickly. You don't really feel like you've got the strength in your arms yet to really get that golf club moving. And so we're trying to make the pressure in your left toe stay for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So go to the top again. So the more Christos keeps forcing his toe here, as he starts to pull on the golf club, what it does is it keeps his body a bit more closed, his chest a bit more closed as he loads the golf club. Now at this point, when he's got the golf club underneath him, underneath his chest, he can create force on the handle, which is gonna put the club into the turf. But at that point, he's now gonna use his left foot to now move the golf club around him which now makes the club path work from the inside and then back inside again. So that pull phase in the downswing, in concert with holding the pressure and forcing his left toe, really allows him to get the golf club in a really nice delivery pattern. So have another go for me. So as we go up to the top, he's gonna to apply the force into the toe and then move around. Now things that we've worked heavily on which camera are we on, James? Whichever one. <laughs> Master of drums. What we've worked really hard on is good grip, good setup, good posture. All of the time, I would never look at uh, Christoph, Christos or say anything before we look at how he's standing to the golf ball. It's, it's really, really important. You were certainly a weak gripper when we first started working <laughs> and that stronger hold has really started to be something that you do. And if anything, Christos tends to start to work to even stronger with the hold, uh, which often can lead us to, to missing it a little bit down the left. But you know, I think when you're play young and you're playing the game, you're playing a lot, we get setups that just fluctuate a little bit. I would really advise anyone out there, dads, coaches, really be passionate about the setup. This desire to let junior golfers get away with setup just for the hope that they enjoy the game, I really think that's short lived because you can only enjoy the game if you keep on progressing. If you go through those hard yards early on, it doesn't have to be really painful for the golfer, but those hard yards are making sure that the fundamentals are right. You only have to advise them in ways to move and they'll pick up the slack and they'll run with it. And we've seen that very much with, with your golf and your handicap and where it's come down to. Where are we at handicap wise now? 8.9. So 8.9. Where did we start a couple of years ago? It's about 13, 14 maybe. Yeah. So we've come down a significant amount and I believe that this is all built on, built on the foundations of, of really set up. So let's see you do a few more of those drills. So pressure on the toe, that's it and then use that around. Very good. Pressure 
pressure on the toe. Yep, and then move it around. Super. Let's see you hit one. If you don't hit this absolutely perfect, I failed as a golf coach. <laughs> Nice move. So we immediately saw the path straighten up, less shape, and now a straighter ball flight. Yeah. Very good. So something that we do, we always have up on the screen when Christos and I are working. I'm just going to reference the screen on the left-hand side here, James. So this is Christos on Monday here. This is him doing one of his drills. And so there's, there's the force in the left toe. There's the body feeling a bit more shut. This gives Christos more time to pull on the golf club. We're still trying to encourage activity with his lower half. We're not trying to hold or stall out the body. We're just giving the arms a time to, to load the golf club. And now you can see as he then moves through, the left leg is pushing the force upwards and you can see how the body's moving around. And so the golf club from this point to this point really represents, and I'll bring this up on the right-hand screen now, James. It really represents this part of the golf swing. So swing plane, setup plane, is this silver angled line and the direction that plane is in is not quite the path, but very close to the path. So if we set you back up to the golf ball, what we want to understand is that the silver angled plane is this one here, let me grab another golf club, Christos. Set yourself up. This is the plane down at the golf ball that we're trying to work in. And the golf club in its journey will travel in to in on that angle. So now make your back swing. Yep, to the top. Pull the golf club down load the toe so we can now see that the club is head is inside toes loaded now move that left leg back pull the handle around so the club works in to in and so we're trying to make the club head create this in to in arc we're not trying to make the club go inside out we're just trying to make it go in to in so when we look at back to the screen james on the left hand side when we look at this delivery point, we're looking to make the handle go in to in. The club head has a less acute in to in because of the radius of the club head. But the pelvis, the middle of the body, is making the circle to create that, to allow that to happen. Now, what we need to understand, and Christos understands this completely, that if the circle gets pushed back here too much, we will meet the golf ball. Oops. We will meet the golf ball with a path that is too much this way. So you can see we've still got exactly the same arc here, but because of the red line and where the circle is, the ball is met with too much of an outside-in pathway. So the more we load through this toe for longer in our downswing, the more it allows the path to enter the golf ball from here, but the force that we're creating down through the toe of the foot is going to open the hip back up so that we can really feel the around nature of the golf shot, but it just needs to happen at the right point. And that strength that we feel as we get older, it's much easier 
to pull the club, load the toe, and make that sequence up. When we're younger, it's just that little bit more difficult, isn't it? So, have another go for me. Hold it there, good. So, the more we load the toe, we could even ramp it up even more. We can make the golf club feel like it's back here. Now you're gonna use your left foot and right shoulder to move the golf club around you. Super. And again. Now I use the left foot, right shoulder. Super. Now do the same thing for me with the golf ball. <clears throat> Have a full practice swing and then hit me one. Well done. Still needs to work a bit more back inside. And again. You don't know which ball to pick there, do you? I mean, there's so many shiny ones. It's like, where do I go with this? <laughs> That's it. Now work it around. Very good. Super, now work it around. Lovely. Oh, nice. Get in there with that now. Very good. So attack angle coming down. Anyone that needs to understand that as soon as you have a path that gets outside in. If I make that club path outside in and I kept everything the same and I moved it inside out, can you see that the angle of attack reduces? So actually making your circle arrive more from in to in. And I only use outside in because that's what everyone's used to really. It's just orientating the circle more around to the right. There really is no outside in. There is always in and in. It's just where the circle's orientated, right, as we know. So we're still looking for you to hold a bit more pressure in the toe as you keep loading the band and then pushing around. Have a go. Yep, well done. Good, yep, super. Let's just see you take that with, with just your right hand only now. Just to grip down the golf club a little bit, make it a bit lighter for you. Go up to the top. Now work it down into delivery. So you feel that, almost that external rotation of the right forearm lasts for a little bit longer mm -hmm. and now feel like the right shoulder left leg can fire through the shot that's lovely so now you feel how that right arm starts to work more under the shoulder pitch rather than working a little up and open it feels like it's a bit more across you and under up to the top load the shaft into the toe that's it, hold it there. Just see if you can get that bit more turned out for the arm. Lovely, good. And now use the left foot, right shoulder. Good, well done. Now with two hands. That's it, and then around. Lovely, now full practice swing for me. Well done. Christos, away you go. <coughs> yeah. 
uh, good good downswing there, Christos. Very good. Very good. So now what we want Christos to do is we're going to aim at the Russocks Hotel. Now, those of you that did or didn't know, I used to coach and caddy for Nick Doherty, and he's hit it in that Russocks Hotel on numerous occasions. <laughs> so we're going to aim at the hotel. This is the Russocks Hotel, this one here. Mm -hmm. That's where he stayed, and that's where he hit it. So if you aim at that for me, and mm -hmm. now what we want you to do is make that through swing to feel as low as possible and make you feel like you're going to pull the ball onto target. Super. <coughs> Lovely, Christos. Okay, there you go. Nicely done, well done. Beautiful. So now we've started to flick the other side. Trapman says you're five inside out, but really the thing that I wanted to develop on that shot there was just the face to path value. Mm -hmm. Golfers need to appreciate that when you're trying to make the ball move right to left in the sky, if you're aiming straight, because your desire is to hit it straight at the target, mm -hmm. of course, this feels like it's going to go left. Well, create the environment where the golfer feels like they could miss it left or it would go at the target. It will encourage you to allow that left side to now sit down and move around you. When a golfer, if I may, boy, your club there. When we swing down, Christos, as we know, when we turn out the way here, our left shoulder tries to make the golf ball go straight makes the handle go along. Now that we've got started to get the golf club a little bit more laid down, a little bit more into the ball of the left foot, now we're looking for this left side to get out of the way. And by getting the left side out of the way, it will feel like the club shaft is going to now start to lay down more. So when I now set the environment where I aim down the right side, now when I'm at this point, now it feels logical to make the left side get out of the way and move the club around to draw it onto target. Coming from a point where a golfer has been a little bit this way to now feel like the left side's going to lay down and feel like I'm going to hit it out of bounds. As I say, I'm going to set the environment, still keep the forces and pressure in the toe, shaft is in a good spot. Now I can use my left leg, my right shoulder to start to make that golf club swing around me. That's it. That's great, Christos. Super. And away you go again with the ball. A little bit heavy, that one, but really good move. So now we've really pulled the path inside, seven and a half inside out. As we talked about earlier, the path inside takes attack angle away. But we've now got the face looking left of the path by five and a half degrees. And now what we want you to do is now split the gap from the Russocks Hotel to aiming at the old hotel at the top of the fairway. Yep. Just to the right of the flag. We're gonna aim at the spire. Okay. The white spire there. Super, super. Very nice. So the most neutral shot that we've played so far, good club path, blade was a degree open to path, attack angle right in the wheelhouse that we want it on. Mm -hmm. So do another drill for me. And something I just wanna pick up on here. Understand that Christos 
is still keeping the handle in front of him underneath the shoulder. It's the shaft pitch that we're looking to change, which affects the right shoulder and the, the right arm. It's not like we're trying to make the hands and arms deep and stay behind him as he's unraveling his body, which people are trying to do out there. We're still trying to make that handle work out in front, pressure's on the toe, and now it's moving around. Good. The left forearm, remember Christos, the left forearm, as the shoulder works around, and the left foot is creating that around, we can allow that left forearm to feel like it turns out, sits down, makes that shoulder sit down, as opposed to it working this way. It's something that we've seen with your driver, isn't it? Where, we're, where we've got so much upright force with the left foot that the left foot actually spins out the way, which makes you try to then hold the ball on line. Mm -hmm. It's great to jump off the left side. We're just trying to make it happen just a little bit later. Have another go. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. We've got all of this data in terms of what Christos does with his feet is through the body trap mat and certainly we'll do another session uh, perhaps upstairs with the body trap mat up on the screen because that really gives us the insight and in how we're using the feet and maybe we'll show where you were and where you're going to be and where you are now. So this isn't done on a whim and a prayer, this is done on factual insights from the pressure mat that tells us where Christos uses the pressures through his feet. Have another go. Yeah. Just a little bit more down with the left forearm there. So the left forearm went a little up as opposed to feeling like it sits under the shoulder a bit more. Yeah. Into the, that's it. Good. All righty. Let's see you turn one back in. Oh, that was super, super. Bit neutral. So just a bit more with the left arm, a bit more with the left arm, really good there. Good move on the way down. So good two degrees inside, four degrees down. So pressure in the toe. Now make that left forearm feel like it turns outwards as you move around. There we go, there we go. Yeah. Good job. Okay, there you go. Yeah, nice. Good job. So 2.6 down, two inside out, couple of degrees close to path. Very good. Same again. Pressure in the toe. That's it. A little bit more with that left forearm. Turn it out a touch more. Into the toe. Turn her out. Yeah, good job. Lovely stuff. Alrighty. <laughs> Beauty. Beauty. Four eight down, one path, zero face to path. Nice shot. I think a lot of people don't appreciate this is how to make change. You know, doing some drills, hit a shot. Doing some drills, yeah. hitting a shot. It's too easy, isn't it, to just grab a ball, hit, grab a ball, hit, grab a ball, hit. And it's also too easy for people to play straight. You know, we, we are looking for a straight shot. We are looking for draws and fades, but you need to set an environment that actually encourages you to do that. So something that we just want to tap on here that we've worked with quite a bit 
leaderboard. I was very lucky to work with a guy called Steve Bann in, in Australia, worked with uh, Stuart Appleby. Have you heard of Stuart Appleby? No. <laughs> very good, competent uh, Australian golfer, Jeff Ogilvy, uh, Adam Scott, Aaron Badley, uh, big uh, nucleus of good golfers. Uh, Steve Bann and Vern McMillan came up with this little bit of kit. It's got TheraBands on it, and it's something that Christos has got at home. The skate slides. And what it allows us to do is feel the pressures through the feet. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do the same drill as you were doing on the floor there. So we're going to make a backswing. And as you complete your backswing, you're going to move the skate out Keep the load in the skate and then move the club down. The skate in to the top. Move the skate into the toe. The club down. Have a go. <coughs> so this really gives us insight into what's going on through the feet. Don't need to worry about a through swing on these ones, Christos. So just as you start to get three quarters of the way into the top of your backswing, that's when the skate's gonna, gonna ride out for me. Good. Back to the start, lovely. Hold it there, hold it there. So we're just gonna keep a bit more load into the toe. Now keep the pressure there, and move it back down to where we were. That's it. Oh, yeah, well done. And again, good save. Good job. And again. There we go. That's better. Hold it there. More turned out. That's it. Good. There we go, well done, well done. Super, lovely. Yep, super. Now jump off for me. So now what we're gonna do, and really I'm just trying to highlight the direction of force through, through your feet here. So now we're gonna put ourselves into that loaded toe position with the club shaft laid down as we were. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna push the skate back and move around. Push the skate back and move around. And you're actually gonna finish up on your right side. Have a go. So skate in, good, so just into that delivery spot. Beautiful. Now we're gonna push the skate out and move the club around. Lovely, good. Lovely, pull the club, push the skate out, super stuff. Understanding that the force going back that way as you're pulling the golf club is the very thing that opens the pivot up and the chest up and sit the shoulder down, very good. So tell us about one of your accomplishments last year. What did you do well in? The rookie tour. Rookie tour? Yeah, so I, I won the order of merit, so I was the best player in my category throughout the whole season. Super, and uh, how many events did you play? 12. 12 events, yeah. yeah. Did you win by much? I won by 11 points. Fantastic, but, yeah. fantastic. And this, the different categories are age category and handicap, handicap category. Yeah. So you actually started the year 14 handicap, 13? 13, 13, 13 yeah, for the start yeah. of the year. Yeah. And then you moved down to eight point. Zero point, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you actually really nice and consistently moving down, like a regular between 36 and 40 points, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Pretty much every event. And I think that's something that we've talked about and with your dad about how the consistency of the progression, rather than I think it's so easy to be 22 points and then 46 points yeah. and you get a massive chop. We've really tried to, not that it's necessarily something that you can work on, but it, I think it's just a, 
a sign that actually we've just gently chipping away at this, mm -hmm. letting the handy cup come down uh, in a stagger rather than these big chunks. Yeah. It makes you feel a bit happier because then you don't turn up and you've suddenly lost mm -hmm. four shots, right? So talk to us about the, the nerves that you experienced with the Rookie Tour and, and leading it. So, you, so you, know, you were going into the last event. Yeah, the last event, yeah. Now, we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll expose you because I think it's what every golfer feels. You, uh, you were leading the Rookie Tour. Yeah. You had one event to come. And <laughs> one of the questions you asked is, uh, and I can't quite remember how you phrased it, but it was along the lines of, what's the worst I can yeah, do to win? Yeah. <laughs> to win? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, when you want something, you don't want to lose it. Yeah. Uh, so explain to us how you overcame that discomfort on the day. I just, I just put it all behind me and just played my golf on that day. And did you have any wobbles off the first tee? Yeah, off the first tee. <laughs> yeah, hit the tree on the left, 10 yards in front of me. So this is Clandon Regis Golf yeah, Club? Yeah, Clandon Regis Golf Club, Tenth yeah. tee? Yeah, tenth tee. So you whipped it off the first, you caught the tree, yeah, and it dropped down tree. 10 yards in front yeah. of you. Yeah, and then what did you do after that? Uh, so I hit, I hit, I think, the six line onto the green and two putted. No, I think I left it just short, chipped on and two putted for bogey. Brilliant. Which I'll take after that first yeah. tee shot. Two points on the first? Yeah. Which is, you know, to be able to have the opportunity to then kind of collect yourself back up. Yeah, you're obviously nervous, not the yeah. best star in the world. Yeah. And it was really interesting, actually. Uh, Annabelle Dimmock, um, who, if you haven't seen it, I was on Sky Sports last night. Um, she was out to uh, tour school and uh, final round. She had to gain her card back because she'd been through injury and there was various different things, the reason why she didn't get her card back. But clearly playing great golf, she finished top 10 in the last event on the uh, European Tour. She started and got to the fourth hole and she made eight, mm -hmm. like triple bogey on a par five. But she put the handbrake on, a few pars, yeah. made another birdie before the turn. She was turn, turning two over and then she came back in three under. And I think... Every golfer at whatever part it is in either the tournament or in the round, you have a sticky patch, don't yeah. you? It never goes from the first hole mm -hmm. to the last hole perfectly well. You happen to have your bit of a wobble on the first yeah. hole when you're most uh, you know, nervous, shall we say. You overcame it and pressed on. I think so often you build this picture in your mind of the very worst thing that you that can happen but of course experience tells you that over a course of a season you've been the best golfer you know once you get the club in the hand and mm -hmm. you're off and running you're you're going to be okay yeah. so uh enjoyed the the, the experience of rookie tour what what's what's for next year what what goals have, have you got any goals or any thoughts uh, about what you want to do achievement I mean, wise i'm hoping by the end of the year i'll be almost off scratch or off scratch yeah that's my goal uh and just i don't know just try and do as well as I did this year in the Rookie Tour. And what do you think are the keys to doing as well as you can next year? Attitude on the course. Yes, yeah, so if you have like one bad hole, you've still got a lot of holes left. Great. Yeah, and... Anything else? Uh, just stick to your fields if it's going wrong. Yeah. yeah just stick, stick it out. Brilliant. Yeah, so hang tough in those tough times and keep a good open mind that even though you're having a bad moment, it's always gonna, mm -hmm. it always can turn around and you're one shot away from like everything working yeah. out, right? Brilliant, let's see you hit a few more and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, that's really nice, Christos, really nice. Good job. Okay, let's see you hit one. So a little bit more with the left arm, if you can. Just a little bit more with the left arm. Just held that one a touch. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Good stuff. Okay. 
want a nice ripped draw down the right side of that fairway on this one, okay. Christos. Don't make me look bad now. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big time player. He's a big time player. Beautiful. So, anyone we want to thank, <coughs> mum and dad, <coughs> um, that you want to thank for your golf? Yeah, I'd like to thank my mum and dad for helping me on this journey. Yeah. And it's an exciting future, huh? Yeah. Well, listen, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully, you've enjoyed that. A little insight into how we do things here with young guys and girls looking to play the game. And of course, seasoned veterans uh, like myself maybe <laughs> anyhow thanks very much really appreciate your time coming in today if you've liked the video today hit the like button share and subscribe while you're here and we look forward to seeing you next time <laughs>